Welcome to my lecture online. In this second video in this series, we're going to find the exactly the same thing as we did in the first video, the volume of one eighth of a sphere. But in the first video, we used cylindrical coordinates. No, we used spherical coordinates. And here we're going to use cylindrical coordinates. And then in the future video, we'll use Cartesian coordinates to show you that you can use any coordinate system. However, when you're trying to find the volume of a spherical object, you're probably better off using spherical coordinates. But it can be done in the others, and that's what we're trying to show you. So again, we're finding the volume of one eighth of a sphere. So at the end, we're going to compare that to one eighth of four thirds pi r cubed. Notice that here we have a different kind of volume element, dv, which is defined as rho d theta d rho dz. Notice that the edge of the sphere can be defined as x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared, and x squared plus y squared cannot be replaced by rho squared. And then we can solve this for rho as being the square root of r squared minus z squared. That's important when we find the limits of integration because that's the key. So to find the volume, we need to do a triple integral over the dv, which is defined. That's the same dv right there. So it's a volume element. Notice the projection from there down on the xy plane gives you the angle theta. The height to the volume element from the volume element from here to the top is z. And then, of course, we're going to integrate uh, over rho from zero to the edge of the sphere. Of course, the edge of the sphere depends upon what the value for z is. So the limits of integration are going to go from, oop, this, this doesn't belong here, from zero to pi over two for the theta, from zero to r, the maximum value that z can be. But here we define the integral rho d rho uh, uh, from 0 to the square root of r squared minus z squared because it literally has to be to the edge of the sphere depending upon the value of z. That's going to be, uh, well, we go from the z-axis outward, but notice that here you go all the way to r, but here you go down to 0. So it has to be a function of z. So let's go ahead and solve the problem then. So we're going to start with integrating this. So we have v is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of d theta times integral of dz from 0 to r, and then here we have the integral of this becomes rho squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to the square root of r squared minus z squared. And when we plug in those values, we get, again, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of d theta, the integral from 0 to r times dz, and then here when we plug that in, uh, notice I can take the one half out, I can put that in the front, and rho squared would be this quantity squared that would be equal to r squared minus z squared, like this. And now we can go ahead and integrate this. So this becomes equal to, the volume becomes equal to one half times the integral of d theta from zero to pi over two. And here when we integrate this, we get r squared, r squared times z minus z cubed over 3, right? When you get, integrate z squared, you get z cubed over 3. r is a constant, so r squared times z is the integral here. And we're going to evaluate from 0 to, well, in this case, um, from 0 to r, right? From 0 to r. Okay, so this becomes equal to 1 half the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of d theta times, so here when we plug in the upper limit, we get r cubed minus, we plug in, well, when we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. When we plug this in here, we get r cubed over 3, like this. The lower limit gives us nothing. And then if we multiply this by 3 and divide by 3, notice we get 3 r cubed minus r cubed, which is 2 r cubed. So this gives us 1 half times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 times d theta times 2 r cubed over 3. And then we realize that the 2's cancel out. And now this means that the volume is equal to r cubed over 3. Oh, I thought you were coughing. r cubed over 3 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of d theta. Of course, that's an easy integral. That's equal to r cubed over 3 times theta. 
evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. And so this gives us pi r cubed over 6. And now you can see that if you compare, the volume is equal to pi r cubed over 6, which is indeed 1 8, the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Notice this times this will give you that. So again, we showed that you do indeed get 1 8, the volume of a complete sphere. In this case, we used cylindrical coordinates instead of spherical coordinates. And now for the hard one, which is Cartesian coordinates, you look at that and go, it's a spherical object, why would you use Cartesian coordinates? But you can, and we're going to show you how to do that as well.